So here we are again, West Coast Eagles are still playing absolutely shite. And as a result, there is an immense amount of media scrutiny on them right now. And rightfully so, to be honest, the performances warrant that kind of pressure. When teams do tend to cycle down like this and everything is going wrong, you do start to see people start to conjure little narratives left, right and center, start to analyze everything the club's ever done, particularly in the last five years, start to look at it with a negative lens. And in particular this week, it appears the trade for Tim Kelly that was done at the end of 2019 season is the topic at least according to Kane Corns. Now I'm not making this video to you know defend my club vehemently nor am I making it to attack Kane Corns as such but I just thought it would be interesting to actually explore this topic. Did the Eagles get it all wrong when they went after Tim Kelly two years ago? Now I sort of ummed and art about making another video about the Eagles but then I thought about it this is actually probably one of the more significant trades in recent memory. In fact it's arguably one of the biggest trades in terms of what a player has given up to recruit a player to their list. Now, Tim Kelly certainly not the biggest name to move clubs in recent times, and he's certainly not the best player, but when you consider that the Eagles gave up two first round picks and two second round picks for a player like Tim Kelly, it's fair enough to suggest that this trade should be put under the microscope when things aren't going so well. In terms of trade collateral offered, I think this would probably be the biggest deal since Chris Judd departed the Eagles back in 07 and joined Carlton. So in this video, I'm just going to hash it out with you and see do we agree with Kane Corns in his comments so if you have a short memory I will give you a very short history lesson obviously the Eagles won the flag in 2018 the end of 2019 they finished fifth and this was largely seen as a bit of an underachievement given where they were going into the final round of the season and if I may say so myself as a fan the immense talent and list potential that team had after winning the flag the year before so they missed out on the top four narrowly there's obviously a need to improve the team's well and truly in contention when you look at the list profile of the players in their prime and and if you had to isolate one single weakness on the Eagles list at that time, it would probably have been the midfield. Over on the other side of the country, a player called Tim Kelly has just finished his second year at Geelong and maybe wasn't considered, you know, a brown low quality player, but certainly respected by most as a genuine A grader of the competition. Tim Kelly's out of contract. He's West Australian and due to some personal issues, he desperately needed to get back to Western Australia. But from what we can tell, he's not really interested in Fremantle. He specifically wants to play for the Eagles. So based on that justification, this trade is an absolute no brainer. So let's talk about what specifically was traded for Tim Kelly. The Cats received picks 14, 24 and 37 in 2019 and then a first round at the following year which I believe became pick 20. With these players Geelong selected Sam DeConning and Max Holmes and traded the other picks who became Jeremy Sharp and Ronan O'Connor. Of course those guys didn't end up at Geelong. So that is a substantial draft hand to have handed over to the Cats two years basically of no first or second rounders and if you follow the draft extensively like so many of us do you'll understand that that kind of is selling the farm for a single player. Now it's really too early to assess you know how successful these drafts will be just name a few players that the Eagles probably missed out on I don't think we would have taken a deconning after taking a Ruckman the year previous but some West Australian talent was available guys like Devin Robertson Trent Rivers or even a couple of South Australian boys in Harry Schoenberg and Caleb Poulter they'd all be welcome additions right now so while that is a decent amount of pretty good talent you would have to say it does remain to be seen whether these guys are actually even half the player Tim Kelly is so the opportunity cost of adding a star player in his prime in an area of need was that we missed out on some good talent who may or may not end up really good, but nonetheless, it's a bit of a blow to our list profile. Now, if you ask me at the time, I was critical of the way we handled this deal. Given the delicate nature of Tim Kelly's situation, uh, he's desperate to come home, he's out of contract, we ended up paying what you would expect to pay for a gun contracted player. In other words, we were way too meek at the trade table. We've shown a little bit of a pattern of this in recent years, the Eagles being very generous at the trade table because we favor just getting the deal done. Now, Cats fans watching this at the moment might bristle at that thinking, you know, no way did you overpay us. But correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think a team has ever given away two years of both first and second round draft picks for a single player. On the plus side, it's important to remember that the earliest pick out of that draft hand was pick 19. So we're not talking about genuine top 10 picks picks here, the Eagles handed over picks that were in the late teens, 20s and 30s. Regardless, considering the power the Eagles had in that position, I am still critical of the way they offered so many draft picks for one single player. Now, Kane Corns is critical of this trade, particularly in hindsight, because of the fact that the Eagles haven't really taken too many first rounders. In fact, he points out we've only taken 
one first rounder since 2017 being Jared Brander. And that is factual. It's a fair observation. But to add a little bit of context, 2017, the year we drafted Brander, we'd actually traded in four second round picks as well. And some of those guys included Liam Ryan and Oscar Allen. So we clearly felt comfortable that we had brought in a lot of youth very quickly. One of them was already a premiership player and would be an All-Australian in 2020. So the Eagles took a calculated risk to trade out of two consecutive drafts on the basis that they felt the youth was okay at that stage. Kane Corns then goes on to point out that other clubs are going out and getting multiple first round draft picks. And he's right, they certainly are. And I did a little bit of digging into which clubs have taken multiple first round draft picks and I excluded next generation academy players and father sons because they probably don't quite count. But you obviously had Essendon in 2020 take three top 10 picks. Port had great success in 2018 with Rosie, Butters and Dersma all coming in the top 18. I think Gold Coast also had picks two and three with Lukosius and Rankin. Adelaide also had a couple of first rounders in 2020 as did GWS. There was also a couple of 2019 examples with Fremantle in 2019 getting Young and Sarong and Melbourne in 2019 getting Jackson and Cosie Pickett. Now that all sounds great when you have these picks but don't forget the Eagles didn't have these picks to begin with. With. The earliest picks they had were in the late teens. And to contextualize some of these early picks, when you look at Essendon last year, GWS last year, both of these teams got those picks because gun players walked out on the club. Equally, Fremantle in 2019, that's looking like a great batch of kids they picked up there. From memory, that was because Brad Hill had walked out on the club. Port Adelaide in 2018 lost Pollack and Wingard. Now, don't get me wrong, they've done it to great success with the kids they've picked up. And also Gold Coast in 2018, when they picked up Lacocious and Rankin, had just lost Tom Lynch. So I think to compare critically the Eagles with some of these clubs, we're basically being penalised for not losing key players to other clubs. And with all due respect to all of those teams I listed, are any of Melbourne, Essendon, GW, and Fremantle really blueprints for success. Now, I don't mean that disparagingly, but I think we can fall into this trap sometimes when we're talking about trades and drafts. When we look at a club who's brought in a number of draft picks, we sort of overlook the fact that that because they've lost several players. And I think it does sort of breed this idea that teams with a lot of draft picks are doing better than they actually are. Now, again, you can be Port Adelaide and nail it with Rosie, Butters and Dersma. That has worked out fantastically for them. But off the top of my head, and I could be wrong, I can't think of many of the last, you know, five to ten premiers has their model for success really been built on farming top 10 picks look obviously it's better to have the draft picks than not if they were given to you but the cost of getting these draft picks is a period of lack of success or losing key players so i guess what i'm saying is i reject the notion the eagles are cooked because you know they traded two years of draft picks i think with the modern landscape now and trading in free agency you can make up a lot of ground from drafts you miss through trading in players now just to be clear i'm not delusional about where the eagles are at and the youth does not compare very, very well at all to some other clubs. I guess I'm just picking apart the logic of Kane Corns in suggesting that we got this strategically wrong. I'd agree we overpaid for Tim Kelly, but going for Tim Kelly in general was clearly the right thing to do. And to use a counter example for Kane, if you look at Geelong, who are considered by many to be the premiership favorite this year, their model has been to almost entirely ignore the draft and simply they're getting away with it. Kane does make some final observations. He says Tim Kelly was phenomenal at Geelong and he hasn't quite been that same player. Look, I will agree with that. I think some of that is down to the fact that Geelong was such a great, strong midfield. Tim Kelly was probably made to look a little bit better than he actually was. But to be honest, I still think Kelly is a pretty good midfielder. He also then says, and I quote, in hindsight, if you knew his performance was going to be this, they were all in at the time. Now that doesn't grammatically make any sense, but I think he was saying that if we knew what Tim Kelly was going to produce in his time here, we wouldn't have done the deal. And to be honest, based on everything I've said so far, I think he's completely wrong in that sense. Overall, I am still happy that we recruited Tim Kelly and I think we would be criticized had we not because we would still probably be struggling very hard. I genuinely believe the narrative then would be the Eagles overlooked Tim Kelly, allowed him to join Fremantle and then are plummeting to the bottom of the ladder. Kelly's young. He's younger than me, if you do consider that young anymore. He's turned 27 this year. He's still got three, four years of prime left in him. And the, the Eagles profile, that's right for right now. Obviously, the Eagles have a lot of work to do to stay in premiership contention. And obviously, it's looking a bit shithouse by now. But personally, whether we stay in contention or not, it doesn't live and die with Tim Kelly's trade. But anyway, guys, that's my take on the Tim Kelly trade. Let us know in the comments what you thought of it. I think we can be a little bit overly simplistic at times to suggest it. you know, if the Eagles don't win a flag with Tim Kelly, is it a failure of a trade? I honestly think that's a little bit simplistic because you can sort of go back and analyze any recruitment of any player in the same way. And if the Eagles shit the bed and aren't 
contention over the next few years. I don't blame that on the Tim Kelly trade. I blame that on other aspects of incompetence because at the moment, I genuinely believe they're underachieving. But that's it, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.